Hey everybody, it's Jim and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Last time we created a Corn Shell function, excuse me, a Corn Shell program. And inside of that Corn Shell program, we defined a function called cube. And what it did was it took in a number and it cubed it. And it stored the result in the variable called result, which could then be accessed at any point in the program. And we ran it by saying cube space 4, and then we printed out the output by accessing dollar sign result. So in this case, our function has excuse me, our program has the function defined right here. And this is a great function. And we decided that we want to use this function in five different corn shell programs. So what you can do is you could take and cut and paste this code right here and put it in all five of your programs, all five of your corn shell programs. However, that creates two slight problems. The first is anytime you want to update this function, you now have to update it in six different places. That's kind of a pain in the neck because you have to remember which corn shell programs you put this into. The second problem is that this adds extra code to your programs. And I know this is a small function, it doesn't take up much room. But imagine if it was a function that took up 200 lines. Now your program, your corn shell script, is 200 lines bigger. So today we're going to learn how to take a function, save it in its own special file, and then access that file from any corn shell script you want. And therefore, you will then have access to the function itself. So the first thing we have to do is save this function just as is. Here I am in a function, excuse me, in a directory called slash learning slash functions and our function was called cube so our file is also going to be called cube and for this magic to work you do need to name the file to be the exact same as the function name, even uppercase and lowercase. And inside of the function, the file cube, is our definition for our function cube. And I did add a little bit to it as far as comments. Comments just say, this is the input. This is how you call cube. You say cube space number. And this is the output. Cube the input and stores the output in the variable result. The math, however, is still the same. We take dollar sign one, we store it in n, and then we just cube n and take the result and put it in a variable called result. Okay, so we've just edited our file called cube, and just a reminder, it is stored in this location. And we are going to need that location when we do our magic. So, how do we get access to that file cube in a directory called slash learning slash functions? And how do we get access to the function inside of it? Well, here's our program. And this program, func7.ksh, talks about how to store functions in a common directory and call them. And the magic comes from this variable, this corn shell variable called fpath. And I assume fpath stands for function path. 
f path, which is all capitals, is a corn shell variable that tells the corn shell program and the corn shell where to look for functions. So in this case, I have said that f path is equal to the following list. It is equal to slash learning slash functions. And what this colon is, it is a divider between entries in our variable here. So slash learning slash functions is our first entry. And then our second entry is the dot. And you may remember that the dot means present working directory. And then we have another colon. And then our last entry is slash Etsy slash corn. Now what this all means right here is tell it to try to find a function that is outside of the program. It will first look in slash learning slash functions. If it finds the function there, it grabs the code for it. If it can't find it in slash learning slash functions, then look in your present directory. And if you can't find it there, then look in slash etc slash corn. And hopefully, in one of those three areas, it will find it. So how do we tell our corn shell program that we want to access a certain function? You do that. First, you set up your f path variable with the different directories to look into. And then you simply say auto load space function name. And auto load is a corn shell command. It's all in lowercase. And then just the function name you want to access. In this function name, once again, is the name of the file, and it is the name of the function inside of the file. So, auto load space cube says, hey, I'm looking for a file called cube that should have a function called cube in it, and it's going to be, hopefully, in one of these three directories. And look for it first in here, you don't find it there, and look for it in your present directory. And if you don't find it there, then look in slash etc slash corn. And once again, these colons are separators. So after this point, corn shell, your corn shell program, now has all the code for the function cube. And you can call it just like this, and then print out the result just like that. And we even have a variable dollar result right here because all of the code for cube is known. And inside of the function cube was our variable result. So let's run this program, which is called func7.ksh, and see if cubing4 does come out to be 64, which is what we expect it would be. Here we go. We're just calling our program right here. And as you can see, dollar result is 64, which is exactly what we expected. Once again, here's how you do it. You take and store your function in a file that has the same exact name as the function. And you make note of what directory it is in using the pwd command for present working directory. Then inside of your corn shell script, you simply define a variable, a corn shell variable called fpath, and include in it that directory where your function file is stored. 
Lastly, you simply say auto load space function name. And from this point on, the code for the function cube will be known to your corn shell program.